Do you have a dog that hates getting in the car? Do you have to struggle every time they fight you? It's so frustrating when you have a dog like that. There's many reasons. It could be that your dog is just bratty. They're having fun at the park. They don't want to get in. Maybe they're nervous of that car. Maybe getting in the past has been uncomfortable. Do they get car sick while they're in there? It could be a ton of reasons. There's many different solutions. And depending on the dog, there's different types. For some of those bratty dogs, it's too bad you're having fun at the park. I need you to get in there. But if I do that with a dog that's really terrified of the car, that's not going to help. It's going to make it worse and it's going to hurt my relationship with them as their protector. Or if I have a bratty dog that's willing to escalate because they don't see their owner as a leader and suddenly they may decide to use teeth, no way I'm going in there. That's the last thing I want. Before I show you what to do, I want to talk about two things I don't want you to do. Don't think that just taking your dog to a place that's great is going to solve the problem. Going to the park so the dog realizes the car is not so bad, dogs can't rationalize like that. The whole time getting into the car and the whole car ride, they may be terrified. They can't put together that it was a good thing in the end. The other mistake people often make is they think they're going to help their dog. They get out food or a toy. They use their voice to help their dog. But are you helping your dog? We get that food in the dog's nose. We try and lure him in. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. You can make it. Come on, buddy. But all that pressure tends to have the dog actually rehearse. This is a pretty scary situation. You're forcing me to do something. Now, step one, surprisingly enough, doesn't involve the vehicle. You may think that's odd. It does involve this little platform. Now you don't need a platform. You could use just a foam square, a dog mat, anything at all, because we're going to create a picture. What do I mean by that? Well, there's triggers for all of us, dogs and people. Good example is me going to the dentist. Hate the dentist. As soon as I drive in and I see that, that industrial building, it immediately puts my teeth on edge. I go in and the smell of the office, those triggers make me nervous. But there's other triggers we have. You know, I smell popcorn. I think of the theater, like movies. Um, I think of having fun with friends. So there's those triggers for the dog. So we're gonna create a picture with this platform that it is wonderful and I don't want it near the vehicle. I could work with this step one in the house or, or anywhere so we're far enough away from the vehicle it's not going to take on any of the negativity. So what do I need for step one? I need something to create a picture, a platform or a mat. I'm also going to get some great treats and I'm going to need my dog. Now you'll notice I didn't put this down because I don't want Lucy climbing on it when I'm busy talking to you and I miss the chance to reward and create that positive trigger. So I'm now gonna put it down. And you might think you just lure your dog up, feed them a bunch of treats. But after one or two, the dog's gonna forget they're even on here. So what I wanna do is create a situation where Lucy comes onto this platform unasked and gets rewarded when she chooses to do so. I want her to choose to come up rather than me luring or commanding or putting her on it because when dogs make choices, it's more valuable. So how do we do that? I'm going to put my mat down. I'm going to get Lucy's attention. Hi, girly. Are you ready? What are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to do? Yes. Yes. Good girl. I'm going to reward one there, but I'm going to toss away. So she gets to approach this little platform again. Yes. Oh, good girly. There it is. There's one and I'm going to throw one away. Throwing away from the platform is a number of things. So I reward on, but I don't even need to because the dog understands because of the timing, I hit this, it's like a puddle. I hit this and a treat appears and gets thrown. It also gets the dog a little more exuberant. When dogs get to move around, they have a lot more fun. So it's gonna add more value if they get to bounce on and off. And I get multiple times where the dog chooses to come back. You can see she came back and she sat on there. So even with just a couple of minutes, she's saying this mat's pretty good, even though she still hasn't figured out necessarily that that's producing treats. Good. And now I'm going to have Betty Ann take over and do that same thing. And let's build some value for that platform. Good girl. So you're going to grab your treats. Good. Reward her once on there and then throw one off. You can show her where it's going. Good. Good girly. And then you're going to let her make the choice. Good. Just wait her out. Don't lure her. It's tempting. Just talk to her. Hey, you. Hi, girly. And lean. I want you to look in here and even move a little bit that way. Good girly. Yes. Good. And then throw it away. 
Good girl, and move back towards it, stare at that. What a good girl. Lucy. So you're not necessarily calling her. You're just sort of, yes, good. And I don't want you to have your, and then you're throwing away, but then I don't want you to have your hand there. I want it to be about coming back to this. The reason I don't want you to lure your dog onto the mat or command them back. When dogs make a choice to do something and we reward that choice, it is so much more valuable. If I am luring, I'm not getting that value. The other thing is for dogs that are so food motivated, I've got one of those, they're gonna see the cookie. They probably don't even notice there's a mat there. So I'm letting the dog make the choice. I'm helping that choice happen by looking at the platform. I could be down low. Um, my body is oriented towards it. You can see right away that helps Lucy get into that position. I don't need to lure and I gain way more value by letting her make that choice. I think Lucy's ready for step two. Now, something to be keep in mind. If your dog's terrified of the car, then I wouldn't go so fast. I'd build tons more value before the car is even in the picture. But Lucy's not terrified of it and she's got some good value. So I think we're ready for step two. We're gonna start working in proximity to the vehicle. But here's an important point. As we're gonna to start to get closer to the vehicle, if I take time out to open that door, there's that trigger. It's like me smelling the dentist office, hearing the drill. I, the dog hears those doors opening and right away they're saying, oh, I don't like this situation. So before we even start, Betty Ann's keeping Lucy busy at a distance, you'd have your dog in your house. You're gonna come out and you're gonna have the door open. Already as we start to work a little closer, without the dog saying, uh-uh, I don't like this situation. One of the biggest mistakes people make in this step is they get too close to the vehicle. If you put your platform too close to your car, your dogs may say, oh, she's gonna try and get me in the car. I don't want any part of this. So instead of adding value to the car with their platform, we're gonna have the opposite happen. So I'm starting about 20, 25 feet away. You're gonna pick a distance for your dog. I don't want them looking and saying, oh, there's cars over there, the car's over there. So if they're giving those sidelong glances or worried about coming in close, you are way too close move it further back. We're going to continue to build some value in exactly the same way. So I'm just going to set up a situation where she's likely to have um, a little bit of attention and move towards me. Yes, good girl. I'm going to toss away. Oh, you get that girly. Go find it. Go find it. Yeah. So I'm staying engaged. So she's likely, instead of continuing to sniff, going to turn back, but I'm not cueing her or bribing her. Can you find it in that grass? Can you find it? Can you? Can you find it? Oh, good girly. What a good girl. Oh, let's throw one in there. There you go. Oh, it's way over there. It's way over there. There you go. It's way over here. There it is. Oh, I see it. What a good girl. So I'm moving back so that she's, yes, yes. Good girl. I can reward on there. Now, I'm gonna have Betty Ann continue this and we're jumping straight to step three. While Lucy's having fun, we're going to move that platform closer and closer to the car. My motto, slow is fast. If we move it too fast, the dog says, oh, it's a trap. I know what they're trying to do and I'm gonna blow away all my progress. So we're gonna move it pretty slowly. I'm not sure how far we'll get, but we will find out, won't we girly? Here's an important point. We need to measure what the dog's doing. Is your dog getting tired? Notice I'm using better and better treats as I get closer to there, but I need treats that are gonna interest and motivate my dog through this whole thing. If they're looking like they're losing interest, maybe you need a break, especially if it's hot outside, we're taking a little water break. We'll start out a little bit further again, work our way back close again. Yeah, she still doesn't care about that car. Excellent, toss one away again. There what a good it. girl. Get yeah, that one. There. Where is pick it? Up one. Oh, there it is, there it is. Yes. Whoa, is that? Okay, that's 
Oh, is that? Oh, look at you go to that thing. Yes, now I'm in a lousy spot. You're going to throw one away, and I'm going to go the other side of the platform so that she can actually get on there. Where is it, Curly? There it is. So I'm going to slide over here. Good, yes. Good, right beside the open door, and she doesn't care, and you're going to throw it a good ways away this time. Oh, so I can slide that right over. Oh, I like that. She clearly went for that platform. Remember, this is not about getting to the car. This is about building the dog's excitement for that picture of the platform or mat while the car is there. So don't go too fast or you're going to blow that success. Now, I've started to put some great treats. There's actually some chicken. And it, I'm not going to point it out to her and say, get it, get it, get it, because that would be scaring her. So all I'm going to do is let her still make that choice, whatever she wants to do. Yes, good girl. I might put another one there if she chooses to get that. I'm going to let her, oh, good girly. Ready, get that one. You can see she's still not the least bit worried. That's what I want, good girl. Excellent, what a good girl. You get that, I'm gonna steal a little more chicken so that when she comes back, it's up here. Mm. And I'm even gonna put a piece up there so if she wants to check out that crate, she can. Good stuff. Oh, good girly. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Oh, look at you. Yes, good girl. I'm going to reward a few times in there. Yes, good girl. Oh, you're brilliant. You are brilliant. That happened a lot faster than I expected. I got a big win. You may be saying, oh, the problem is solved. I'm not that brilliant. I'm not sure. Now it might be. I'm going to try again, see what she does. Good girly, yes. Oh, good girl. But I half expected she might. Some dogs, if they're not sure of that. Okay, girly. Okay, okay. So the problem's not solved just because my dog went in there. That's part of the value. Couple of things, me throwing the treat away, the dog moving back um, with a little more energy, they're more likely to be less inhibited and offer that behavior. I was even a little surprised by that. The other thing is the platform, because it's a little higher, makes that step a little easier, especially as a dog may be nervous because getting in there has been difficult in the past. With nervous dogs, they're always scrambling. So this just made it an easier transition. We used three tools that helped with today's success. One was the gentle leader, the leather leash, and Betty Ann was using a bait pouch so that she could quickly get to those treats. If you think your dog would benefit from these tools, you can get yours at McCannDogs.store. After the session with Carol, um, I went home and I actually tried a kitty litter box as a step stool for getting Lucy in and out of the car, but it flipped and it got out of, it didn't work well. So then I got a two-step step stool and it's absolutely amazing. I did a few tries using liver um, as the treat to get her into the car. And within a few tries, she was hopping in and out of the car, just like, it was amazing. I previously was quite nervous coming to class because I used to struggle getting Lucy in or out of the car. And um, with the techniques that I've learned, is like, we're going to class. This is going to be wonderful. I can get her in and out without any trouble. Lucy is pretty exuberant. One of her struggles has been jumping up because she loves people. If you're struggling with jumping up, check out this video. On that note, I'm Instructor Carol. This is Betty Ann. This is Lucy. Happy training.